throughout this month of January into the next coming months, I want to take a minute of your time and talk to you about the one of a thousand mandate. A lot of questions, and I'll try to clear them up for you. But about early uh, summer, maybe late spring, early summer, I read a book written by a wonderful author here at Global that uh, wrote uh, a biography of John Wimber. I read his book, I read her book and, and read his story, and something was said there, and I can't remember exactly what it is. It's, a, it's worth reading. I can get you the title if you want. But um, I, when I closed that book up and laid it down, I was rejoicing in what God had done. And I realized that 30-some years ago, Judy and I had planted a church, but this thought came to me that we should have built an army. You have to think about that. We, we, we establish churches, we plant churches, and there's good reason for that. But we had planted a church, and over those 30 years looking back, with the number of people that we had touched and been come through our doors and through our ministry, come and went and et cetera, that it would have been better for us to have built an army of soldiers uh, for Jesus Christ than to just plant a church here in Warmleysburg. By the way, 3,049 souls in Warmleysburg, about the size of Nazareth when Jesus was a young boy. Um, fast forward, I have in my journal, I wrote it down, uh, it was early in August, and then by the August 15th, I had heard it a second time, but the Lord had spoke to me and he said, you should build an army of 1,000 prophetic voices, and those 1,000 prophetic voices will leverage another 7,000 prophetic voices in central Pennsylvania to change the spiritual climate, to change the atmosphere. And when the Lord gave me that word, I heard it once, I heard it twice, and when I heard it the second time, um, he then put a little footnote on it. He says, I want you to go to your elders and talk with them about it and share, share with him because this is going to be bigger than, than us. And so I didn't do that right away. And as the week got from me, I think this happened on a Monday, as the week got from me, uh, the longer I sat on that word, the less courage I had. And I lost courage in the word and, because I didn't share it when I should have. And so by Sunday, that Sunday, uh, I was a mess. And I remember saying, to John, I'm, I'm sort of out of sorts and uh, whatever. I think Annie spotted it. And then um, we, we all ended up praying for me. And while we were praying, as, as we were praying together, the Lord said, I told you to share with the elders about this 1,000 voice mandate. And um, you didn't do that. And, it, and it's like everything made sense then. So I quickly uh, scheduled a meeting with them. We got together, and they were kind enough to meet in an emergency meeting and hear my heart and, 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 and the, the, the thoughts that had been given to me by the Lord. Which, by the way, um, he's given me a big mandate with a little bit of instruction. So we're literally walking into the dark. However, I know he's there because he's faithful. He can't be anything but faithful. He calls you, you just step out onto the water. So anyways, um, as we begin to discuss it, as I let the elders judge the prophecy and the word, um, things started to gel a little bit, and it's all coming together today on this particular day. So it's uh, such a blessing that you're here and you're watching and listening Online, because I, I want to begin today. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity, if you like to, to sign this card and to register your voice 
and commitment uh, today if you like, but I'm fine if you want to take this card home and pray over it and ask the Lord if he's leading you to do this. So let me define prophetic in this setting first of all because there can be a lot of confusion about it. If I lead someone to Christ, I have done the work of an evangelist. I may lead several people to Christ, and indeed all believers should be actively sharing their faith and trying to lead people to Jesus Christ. But if I lead people to Christ, that does not mean that I'm an evangelist. I've just done the work that the evangelist does. Exactly, you know. Um, I may teach a Bible study. That doesn't mean I'm a teacher necessarily in a five-fold manner, right? I can prophesy. In fact, all believers, I believe, can prophesy and should prophesy. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the title prophet. So I, I just want to throw that out there to take away any fear that what we're looking for is a thousand prophets. Let me just tell you, if we had a thousand prophets, oh my Jesus. <laughs> we might not have a mandate, we might have a mess. But anyways, oh God, give us a thousand prophets, really, truly. What I believe that the Lord is asking you and me to do is to speak words that edify, encourage, and build. <clears throat> so I'm going to just tell you very quickly that what I believe that the Lord has given us here is an opportunity to establish a pattern in our lives over the next two years, because I have two years to do this. Two years because what? I don't know. I just sense that the Lord has given me two years. It could be two years until the next election. Well, it is actually two years till the next presidential election. You know, It could be two years until I'm supposed to retire. I, I, you know, I have no idea why two years, but I think I have two years to do this. So uh, I'm going to tell you that I believe in my spirit that at 9-11, September 11th, 2001, the church had an opportunity to shine and the nation had an opportunity to return to God. I believe that the nation was shaken up for a minute and returned to the churches anyways for a minute and then ro rolled over and went back to sleep. Then 2020 comes along and I, I think that the church had an opportunity to shine. Now, a disclaimer is that we were dealing with something we never had dealt with before, right? So we're getting information and mixed signals and et cetera, and we don't know how deadly this thing is. We don't know how, um, you know, risky we were living. It, it, everything was all brand new, right? That's why they called it novel. Well, you could write a novel on it right now, you know, but... It was novel because it was new, but it's actually old, just a variation of something old. But now, looking back two years, we can say, oh, okay. And we can understand that it was both deadly and not deadly and still mysterious. I believe that the source of that was the same source as 9-11. I think it's demonic. And God allowed it. To give the church a chance to shine, I'm going to just tell you, I am church, you are, we are, I believe we failed. Report card time, I think the church failed. We had an opportunity to shine, and instead we ended up judging. That's not our job, not our job description. So this isn't about politics, this isn't about race riots, this isn't about pandemics, conspiracies, or any other thing. It's about the church learning and preparing itself for whatever is next. So I, I'm going to tell you that the, the goal isn't getting everybody to speak nice. That's not the goal. 
It would be helpful, but it would be, that's not the goal. Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. We don't have a problem with our mouths. We have a problem with our heart. Our hearts are mixed with other stuff. And it's time for the church to become devoted to Jesus Christ and the big word. And your words, as wonderful as they are, mean nothing. (laughs) And my words mean nothing. What we need, what the church of Jesus Christ needs to be declaring today is the word of the Lord. That will transform lives. Otherwise, opinions are opinions, and all of them honestly have merit to some degree or the other. I'm not saying that the church needs to become disengaged from politics. We should not do that. I'm telling you that that's not our number one assignment, our goal. The church is the only vehicle that God has on the planet for delivering the good news about Jesus Christ that can change the human heart, that can transform our families and transform our cities, transform our churches. It can, only the church has it. There are a lot of people doing a lot of good things, and God bless them. May they continue to do it. But there are some things that only the church can do. And I believe that at a minimum, the church is supposed to change the dialogue. So when the words are coming at us and you know know where they come from, when I hear people saying what they're saying, it's just a... Uh, 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 you know, uh, an echo of something they're hearing that is all through social media and et cetera, et cetera, you know. But the church of Jesus Christ is poised to have a unique voice and to say, I hear what you're saying, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but I want you to know God is faithful. He has sent his son, and we change the conversation. We turn the conversation. We need to have our elevator speeches ready so then in a, in a moment when someone says one of those things that you and I have heard a thousand times, defining, let me just tell you, it takes no courage to define that you're standing in the middle of a city dump. It takes no courage, but it does take courage to say here in the middle of this city dump, The Lord Jesus Christ is still Lord, and he can transform our hearts and our minds and our cities and our families. It takes courage to speak against darkness, light. So, anyways, the mandate is for you and I to pledge ourselves to speak those words. Nothing more, nothing less. So I thought the best way to do it was to actually create a card because that's what we do, you know? So this card that you should have on your seat or near you or in a basket in the back says, um, the one of a thousand mandate becoming one of a thousand prophetic voices in central Pennsylvania. And, and, And here's like the thumbnail sketch of this. In the course of my day, By the grace of God, or by God's grace, I endeavor to. Now, my editor should have caught this, but it just, we we ended up saying, I will regularly. And then we start saying, speak. So, anyways, a little bit of editing problem there. The message is still the same. In the course of my day, by the grace of God, I will endeavor to speak, or I will endeavor to regularly return to the scriptures to hear God speaking to me. Now, God can speak to us in so many different ways, and praise the Lord for every one of them. But there is one place that you can hear his voice any day, and that is to open the scriptures. So by God's grace, I'll return to the scriptures. You know what I'm saying about it? Turn off the radio. Turn off the television. Shut down the computer. Open your Bible and hear God speaking to you. I will regularly return to the scriptures to hear God speaking. 
I will endeavor to speak words of life, encouragement, comfort, and truth to anyone who needs them. Speak words that release grace to anyone hearing them. Speak words by the Spirit that will positively change the spiritual climate in my family and my city. And I will endeavor to refrain from speaking words that are divisive and demeaning. <clears throat> oh, my. So, so many thoughts and so little time. On the back side of the card is a place for your signature and the date. And then please print, because if your signature is as bad as mine, it needs to be printed. And then give us the phone number and someone will contact you. And what we want to do is to create some way to keep in touch with everybody and to share updates and testimonies and et cetera, you know. And I am looking for someone to help me to administer this. And so more than likely, you'll have someone, not me, calling you and saying, how can we help you? How can we encourage you? What can we do? What, what do you need? What training? Do you need any training? Listen, your mother trained you how to be nice, you know? You don't need any more training than that. But if you want more training, we will be glad to, uh, to help you with that. So once you've done that, then you tear off. There's a tear off portion here with the reminder. It can be a bookmark. It can be something put in your wallet. Uh, but anyways, it's something that you uh, agreed to. And then um, for those of you online, you can email a picture of it into us. Um, for those of you who are here today, you can put your card in the basket back there on the back table. Just, just leave it there. We'll gather them up, and um, someone will eventually contact you, et cetera. I'm just going to do one thing I never do and just stop and say, does anyone have a question? Just raise your hand. Yes, please stand up. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon. What is the name of this church? <laughs> Some of you know what the name of the church is. It's Cornerstone Fellowship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I just came from a meeting of an alcoholic. Oh, God bless you. I have 7,531 days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God, thank you. Do you have a question? Besides that? Okay. All right. I don't have enough time or I will let you. Okay. Um, and by the way, we're all in recovery. We're all in recovery. Not just, you're not alone. Okay. So anyone else? Question real quick. It's unbelievable. But, okay, I have plenty of questions. But anyways, we'll talk about this more as time goes on. So I'm just going to tell you that, uh, does someone have a pen? Judy was the first one to sign up. I didn't ask her. Thank you, dear. Thank you. I didn't ask Judy to sign up, but she was, the, she was her, her number is 0001. And Pete Einstein visited me the other day, and we started talking about this. He's 002. I'm going to be 003 right now, okay? I'm going to sign my card. I'm four. I'm four. <laughs> Pick your prophetic number, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today is the 8th, and it's the year 23. Yes, question. So the, the, the best answer is yes. I, th I think both of those things would be good. Here's your pen back. Thank you, dear. Um, you know, the, the real goal, honestly, for me, I, I don't think there's any hidden agenda to this. First of all, I'm just responding to what I think is obedience. And secondly, uh, I think that what God's goal is, uh, is, is to get the church no matter where she is located, no matter what facility she's in or what part of the uh, central Pennsylvania that we're in. Actually, we've got Kenyans who want to sign up. If they want to pray for central Pennsylvania, God bless them, you know. The, th the, 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 the thing of is, is getting a, a momentum where the church is speaking life. 
in the world, wherever we're at, any day, every day. Listen, you know, we pledge ourselves to something, and we can mess up, we can forget, we can fail, whatever, but we can always return, right? I think it's brilliant of the Lord to lead us, instead of to creating uh, some kind of a New Year's resolution, but I think it's brilliant of the Lord to say, would you join my army? He's the Lord of hosts. And there are battles coming that we need to be trained for. There are battles coming that is going to require you and I to understand how to fight without getting angry at the wrong entity. So my, I signed my card. Just one more time. Thank you, dear. You're God welcome. bless you. And um, we'll put these in the basket in the back, and you can put yours in the basket. And I'm just going to ask you to pray with me. We're going to just dedicate. Do I have some elders here? I, I see Joe. Joe, would you come with me? Uh, Linda's back here. At least you two. Jim's right there. Come, why don't you come? Any elders who hear my voice, why don't you just come here? <clears throat> I love these precious leaders. Don't you? Can you show them that you do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. My goodness. Chris is coming. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask, could you guys just stand behind me here? I know it's a little, little awkward, but we're just going to commit ourselves together today here. I'm going to ask the church that if you would stand with me, please. In fact, the, I've never done this before, but those of you who are online right now watching in your pajamas, <clears throat> would you please stand up with us? Would you stand with us? We're presenting ourselves to the Lord this morning. The beginning of 2023. Father, we humbly come before you absolutely incapable of doing anything of eternal value unless you help us. So, Father, I pray that you would fill us with your spirit, fill us with wisdom and understanding. Father, I pray for the people of God to not be afraid of commitment, willing to let our yes mean yes and our no mean no. Help us to choose one side, not a political one, one side and stand on it with the Lord. So help us, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. By your grace and strength, we will muster an army of a thousand voices in central Pennsylvania to speak life into the city, to speak life into this region and then you do with that what you will. And we pledge ourselves to it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> They're wondering why I had them up here. I, I just feel more comfortable when you're there, that's all. You're my security.